In this video, we're going to learn about mutually exclusive events. Let's do that uh, with an example. Let's roll a die one more time. And uh, this is our sample space, which has one, two, three, four, five, and six. And uh, let's look at two events. The first one is event A, which is first two odd numbers. That's one and three. Let's take one more event, event B, that says last two even numbers, that's four and six. Now let's try to visualize event A and event B on our sample space S. So this, are, this is our sample space. This has events one, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay. Now let's look at uh, where our event A is. That's one and three. So this is our event A. And where's our event B? This is our event B, four and six. All right. What we can see from this image is there's nothing in common between the yellow region and the green region. What we can say is that there's nothing in common. There's no overlap. And another way to say the same thing is they can never happen together. And in the set language, we can say that A intersection B is phi, which means there's nothing in common between both the sets A and B. Now that we understand what mutually exclusive events are, let's look at the formal definition. So for two events A and B, uh, we can say that they're mutually exclusive if the occurrence of one of them excludes the occurrence of the other, which means that they cannot occur simultaneously. In the image, you can see that event A and event B have no overlap. They can never happen together. A couple of interesting observations. The first one is uh, there can be more than two events which are mutually exclusive to each other. In this image, you can see that there are four events A, B, C, and D and you can pick any two of them, they'll be mutually exclusive. Event C and event A cannot happen together, event B and D cannot happen, and so on. So basically, it's not just for two events. You can have a bunch of events which are mutually exclusive to each other. Another one, if you look at simple events, simple events are the events which have only one sample point. All simple events are mutually exclusive to each other. So if you roll a die and you have these six events, getting a one, two, three, four, five, or six, all six of them are mutually exclusive to each other. If you get a two, you can never get anything else. If you get a six, you can never get anything else, and so on. Now let's practice what we have just learned. We'll throw two dice and we'll note the sum. And this is a set of four events. The first one is the sum is even. Event B is the sum is a multiple of three. Event C is the sum is less than 4, and event D is the sum is greater than 11. Now pause the video, think about these four events, and figure out which pairs of these events are mutually exclusive. Again, this will be a lot more fun if you'll come back to this video after solving the problem yourself. Okay, let's give this a shot. Two dice are thrown, let's look at the sample space. First die has six possible options, one, two, three, four, five, six. Same is the case for the second die. And if you look at both of them together, this will be your sample space. So for dice one, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. If we consider the second dice as well, two, three, four, five, and six. So you'll have these six rows for die one and six columns for die two. And together they'll have 36 sample points for our sample space. This is our sample space. Now the next thing that we have to do is find the sum for all of these 36 sample points. Because for all the events that we are given, uh, they're talking about the sum. The sum is less than this, the sum is more than this, etc. So let's find the sum. So this is what our sum looks like. On top left we have 2 and on bottom right we have 12 and we have every other number in between. This is how the sums look like. All right, for the first one, uh, the event A, we have the sum as even. So every other number is even here. So this is our, this is our event A. All the numbers which are even will be part of event A. Let's look at the next one. The sum is a multiple of three. So we can have three, we can have six, we can have nine, and then we can have 12. So the numbers three, six, nine, and 12 will be part of event B. The third one is the sum is less than four. 
I think the smaller numbers are on top left and the larger numbers are on bottom right. So we're going to look at top left here. The sum is less than four. So it can be two or it can be three. So this triangle, this is our event C. And the last one, the sum is greater than 11. Well, there's only one number that's greater than 11, that's 12. So for event D, we have only one sample point. That's when we get the sum as 12, when both the dies will have six on them. So this is what our events look like, A, B, C, and D. And now that you have a visual of all these events, you, you might want to pause the video again and figure out which events are exclusive to each other. Okay, let's take them one by one. Let's look at event A and B. So A is blue and B is green. Uh, do green and blue overlap? Well, yes, they do overlap. Look at these beautiful line of six. So A and B have many common elements. There are a couple of examples. So A and B are not mutually exclusive. What about A and C? A and C is blue and yellow. Uh, is there anything in common between blue and yellow? Well, yes. In this yellow triangle, you have this blue element. So when you have one comma one, uh, it's part of event A and event C. So A and C are also not mutually exclusive. What about A and D? Uh, is there anything in common between blue and red? Well, yes. This event, when you get a 12, sum is 12, this is part of event A and event D. So A and D have one common element, which is six and six. So you can see that A has something in common with B, C and D. So A cannot be our answer. A is out. Let's look at B now. Do we have anything in common between B and C? Green and yellow. Well, yes. In this yellow triangle, we do have green elements as well. So B and C have common elements. What about B and D? Green and red. Is there anything in common between green and red? Well, yes, this element 12, it's a multiple of three and it's also greater than 11. So B and D also have something in common. So we can see that even B has something in common with A, C and D. So B is also out. Now we're left with only C and D. They better be mutually exclusive, but let's figure it out. Do we have anything in common between C and D? Is there anything in common between yellow region and the red region? Well, no. Yellow region is on top left and red is sitting here peacefully on bottom right. So they don't have anything in common. C and D have nothing in common. This is the pair that's mutually exclusive. So C and D are mutually exclusive. It's a fun problem. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. And I think with this, we have a much better understanding of what mutually exclusive events are.